there was a point where people were believing that sex was all for men it's not about uh women or it's not about a pleasure for women and i think a lot of the time it was believed like marriage is like a license for man for a man to have sex the problem just starts from the very beginning in the so called concept of arranged marriages where you are just supposed to get married and then love later on so this could just translate into many times not converting into love at all Hello and welcome to Sisterhood with me Shelly Chopra the show where we confess our challenges and confront our insecurities and together figure out what to do about them Today our spotlight is on loveless and sexless marriages and how in India that there is a big chunk of women who are living their lives without choices without speaking up without rights to pleasure without rights to being having a equal relationship without having um, a family support that stands behind you when you are stuck in such marriages as somebody once questioned do women go crazy after getting married does the pressure of the husband's demands the family's demands the entire village's demands and of course the children's demands all of that play a lot on a woman's life Do we even consider the fact that marriage and mental health are really two sides of the same coin? Why do we just make marriage as just a celebratory moment in a woman's life and not one that could bring substantial and uncomfortable change? In India, we have 96% arranged marriages. Basically that means that the couple hasn't met before or possibly just once before the marriage was fixed. How does such a couple learn to love and then learn to find pleasure in a relationship all that is in spotlight with two important voices i'll be joined with dr nivedita and dr rashi both of who help us navigate and understand how relationships play out for women and so introducing to you dr nivedita first let me come to you why do you think women are constantly raised to believe that sex is going to be a very small part of their larger marriage piece Why is that supposed to be an insignificant part to the success of their marriage? Perhaps there's something deeply problematic with that upbringing itself. That's my first question to you. There are so many things that are involved, you know, and sex is probably only a element. You know, consider we are talking about a let's say very loving two people who have a lot of understanding who have been supporting each other in their career they have children together and you know children have grown up and gone so when all those things are happening people do start thinking about all of this because marriage is an institution you know so i don't think whether it is love or you know whether it's the you know the youngsters butterfly kind of love or where you know or whether it is some whether it is sexual pleasure i feel like it becomes a part of this functioning institution so you know so in many cases you're right people do say well there is about one to like there's about 10 things to run this institution and one of those things are not functioning and it comes down to how important that one thing is to you so i think that is what happens in marriage so i think it's a little bit complicated to actually talk or you know to tell that you know in a marriage there has to be great sex however however it can be a fantastic part of driving a successful marriage why do you think women suffer loveless sexless marriages and what can be done to fix that there are two things shali one is sexless marriage is not okay whether it's the woman or whether it's the man and the second thing you know constantly again i think we've been told that you know for a man sex is very important so if it is a sexless marriage it's okay for him to actually go and seek sex somewhere else because wo kya karta na he didn't get it so he's going to go and fulfill you know himself somewhere else however it is never thought the same way for a women's sexual drive i don't think you know we are still not in a head space where if we i don't know if we can even get away with the fact saying that you know what what will she poor thing do you know he is not sexually functioning so she had to go and have sex with i mean i don't even think that's the thing because immediately somehow they feel like women should be much in control about their sexual needs much in control of it's okay or even sacrificing to a point saying it's okay if my sexual needs are not met but 
infidelity is it joining me now on this episode of sisterhood is dr rashi who meets many married women or women in relationships and counsels them one of the critical problems of discussing this issue around loveless sexless marriage is that we never consider this having an impact on mental health which may be simply ignorance today a lot of factors go into playing into our mental health status and one critical part of that is how happy we are in our relationships with anyone and if they don't have enough love enough physical pleasure or at least respect for our rights on all of these counts then what's the point of it dr ashi thanks for joining us straight up why is it so important to consider a loveless marriage as a very critical mental health issue So let's start from the very beginning. First of all, let's differentiate the Western culture from the Indian culture. When we say in the West, the marriages happen because or out of love. First of all, the foundation basis for marriage here might not be love. So the problem just starts from the very beginning in the so-called concept of arranged marriages, where you are just supposed to get married and then love later on. so this could just translate into many times not converting into love at all i think that's an interesting way to put it love later on but i imagine that these are challenges even in sort of love marriages right um we've all seen so many uh, people around us who've um, started at love but then it's all broken down because of lack of respect lack of recognition that other person deserves that much love pleasure and whatever else uh, equally so in that sense do you think that when women are stuck in these marriages um you know the out doesn't seem to be an option and that really makes um, their personal life complete hell absolutely because it does not matter that what conditions were there in the beginning similarly in the concept of love marriages the couple might have been con- compatible in the very beginning but as life throws its challenges maybe it's financial maybe it's dreams that are different maybe it's challenges regarding parenting or how many children they want to have similarly with time and as you grow into the relationship you might just also grow apart why are women judged uh, for being in sexless marriages and often uh, blamed for them to the extent that you know somebody didn't get what you couldn't offer and as a result you've given the license to the man to go and look outside why are women put through this that's a good topic because women they're not judged but they probably don't they're probably overworked most of the time you know or exhausted both emotionally and physically you know we see it quite so often if you actually ask a whole bunch of you know women for the amount of work they do at home nowadays they are also breadwinners aren't they so they are going out as well and working and then they have children they have house chores and after all of that i'm not quite sure if anybody is having a great you know sex appeal by the end of the night you know and and in between of all that there is like you know family politics there is emotional uh you know um draining and you know there's a lot of things that is involved before a woman actually wants to have sex with that particular man who is the husband you know i mean i don't think not wanting to have sex with a man who actually doesn't share your load or doesn't you know understand you or doesn't feed you emotionally doesn't feed you uh you know in many ways physically emotionally if he does if somebody was not feeding you like that but you are in a married institution i'm not quite sure how appealing it is for anybody to have sex with that person so you know uh, in india in the indian context uh, 96% of the marriages are arranged but most importantly as a concept marriage is considered like a moment of happiness right everybody thinks that oh it's celebration but what they forget to note is that uh, marriages can make people in fact actually both men and women highly vulnerable because they may not be prepared for it maybe it's thrust upon them maybe they don't know what a marriage entails and what are the outcomes of it and then there's societal pressure once in it can't get out of it sort of a thing uh, why do you think there's so much stigma around discussing mental health in the post marriage scenario this would be i think one of the most common questions when i uh, generally treat young females so let's say anywhere from 15 to 24 25 years of age the most common question that arises near the marriage point is that the, uh, will these medication affect her future fertility 
do you think this is something curable can we tell this to the other party now that we are thinking about marriage can you can we bring them here and you can tell them that this is something treatable so that they don't reject this rishta for us so there are so many questions that arise in the minds of the parents so imagine what the girl or the like woman must be going through at that point because somewhere is in this scenario like nobody is focusing on my mental health how important are the conversations on resolution when you're having them with them uh, many times women complain that you know there is an inability or there's basically there's no going back in situations um, and similarly i imagine that often the resolution isn't even talked about but can be a very viable possibility so how do you help them navigate these first of all we need to understand what the issue really is for example like we discussed there could be a difference of opinion on how to handle the finances in the house difference of opinion about the parenting or just basic nature that what things you liked in the past today they are more of a difference rather than uh, the things that you used to find maybe attractive or somewhere appealing in the beginning the resolution mostly is not talked about that much when it comes from the male side because generally they feel that i cannot take this anymore and let's end it and i want to move forward but obviously not generalizing this is just uh, what we say that we experience on a day to day basis but when we talk about women in relationships we say that they have also given up somewhere on the resolution part or maybe that they have learned to accept the differences that this is how my life is and i just have to sail through it do women complain that they are having to be subservient to the male's um, right to pleasure and not get any themselves absolutely this is a thing that kind of baffles you every day that you feel that we talk so much about empowerment and we are all for feminism but then again the more we go towards the interior the core of the cities towns and the small villages we realize that situations have not improved it is still the same that no they don't even know that they have the right to ask for pleasure forget about asking they don't even feel that this is something i deserve they still feel that i am just something to pleasure the other person having orgasms or feeling any kind of sexual pleasure for them or they have been conditioned to believe that this is something bad women do or this is something that spoiled women do and this is not something that people from decent families are supposed to expect out of themselves why is it considered a privilege reserved for men and women most often are expected to not have any rights over pleasure sexual activity well well see i would i could almost certainly say it's kind of like a part of the patriarchy system isn't it it's like men you know uh men are providers and were providers right and men were um taking care of women and fulfilling their basic needs and you know things like that and it was probably looked as something that women were taking care of the home and they were also responsible for taking care of the children and their needs and they were also responsible for taking care of the man and his needs because i think it was kind of looked as the man is taking care of your needs providing you with food clothing and you know all the other things and also children for example right the sex bit somehow was not conceived as something that is equally that the women will like or allowed to even say that that is something that she would like because immediately i think that was it is looked upon like lack of self control and i would really want to say that constantly also i mean in our culture and many culture sex is associated with a person's morale you know and and i think that's the biggest problem because anybody wanting sex or talking about sex or telling that sex is okay or sex is happening immediately is considered as someone with low morale you know i wanting sex is always considered with promiscuity you know it's i mean they are not one and the same thing dr navedita is there a problem as to how women see the idea of sex and pleasure uh, do you think we we think it's something that brings upon shame and conversation in action and in just sort of um, wanting it in the first place i think we have believed and we have learned 
certain things in a certain way for a very long time and talking about your own self pleasure or prioritizing your physical pleasure uh sexual life or sexual pleasures is all associated with um shame and a lot of guilt constantly we are made, made to be you know feeling like only if you do this with someone else or for someone else that it is okay like you know like if you are okay to have sex with your husband then it is okay but if you were to have sex for pleasure or your you know or your need then it is looked down upon and if you masturbate and have sex just i mean not feel sexual pleasure just for yourself it's like a shameful thing it's almost like very dis- it looks down as very disgraceful there was a point where people were believing that sex was all for men it's not about uh women or it's not about a pleasure for women and i think a lot of the time it was believed like marriage is like a license for man for a man to have sex um and i think that you know all that comes with the whole thing of for men sex is very important but for women it isn't so unfortunately we you know had all these things that we have learned for a very long time and i think as a part of evolution it's time to change it it's time to start telling people that yeah. no it's not like that and i think that's what we're all trying to do nowadays i think there's a few of us who have actually come up and you know started talking about all of this there you have it two doctors a lot of perspective big questions to think about nothing is easy and this show at no point wants to be prescriptive but these are discussions that we shove under the carpet we are scared of ourselves our families our husbands our siblings and just to be able to talk about it and get a support system what we don't recognize is that you're not alone a lot of women are suffering this and they are unable to bring themselves to talk about it So this show has meant to be a starting point in that conversation and to bring you experienced doctors who know this some of who who suffered this and recognize the importance of us to note take note and find some answers after all we all have one life to live let's find some love happiness and enjoy relationships that we are part of Remember to tune in to Sisterhood as we come to close to a season we will be bringing you yet another season of Sisterhood with many more important issues to put on the front burner the show where we confront our challenges and confess our insecurities and together figure out what to do about them thanks for joining us